hello lovelies this is for 2022 your aqa physics paper two combined science higher revision video i've taken my other big revision video and chopped it up and moved it all around so make this video i've done the same with my workbook um, and that's available over on my website so in this video and in the workbook we're going to start with the topics that are the major focus of the exam then we're going to look at the required practicals in the exams and then at the end is everything that is not listed so stuff that isn't a major focus but stuff that isn't not on the exam and this video and the workbook do not include things that are not on the exam good luck guys um if you're watching this just before your exam we are nearly at the end if you're watching this a few months before your exams i'm gonna have so much stuff ready for you you and me we are gonna get through this together Scalar quantity is going to be just a number. A vector quantity is going to be a number and a direction. For example, distance is scalar, but displacement is vector because it's distance in a direction. Mass is scalar, but weight, which is your mass upon the earth, is vector. Speed is scalar, but velocity, which is speed in a certain direction, is vector. Acceleration and force are both vector and momentum is also vector. If we're looking for the resultant force, we need to find the difference between them. For example, here we have 10 plus 10 newtons minus 5 newtons is going to give us plus 5 newtons, which is going to be 5 newtons in that direction. For the second one, we have plus 2 newtons minus plus 2 newtons, giving us 0 newtons as overall resultant force, so there is going to be no movement. Your weight is not the same as your mass because your weight is equal to your mass times gravity. Your weight is measured in newtons, your mass is measured in kilograms, and gravity is measured in newtons per kilogram. So your mass will never change, but your weight will change depending on the planet, or depending on gravity. Which is why when they went to the moon, they were basically weightless so they could jump around. Distance equals speed times time. Distance is measured in meters. Speed or velocity is measured in meters per second. Time is measured in seconds. Distance time graphs tell us lots of information. If we have a slope that is increasing, we are moving. And the deeper the slope, the faster we're moving. If it is a flat line, it is not moving. We can see that as time is increasing, our distance is not increasing. So in a distance time graph, the flat bit is not moving. We can calculate speed as the gradients. Gradient is up over across, which is going to be distance over time. Velocity time graphs look very, very similar to distance time graphs, but are difference. For example, at our flat speed here, it is now moving, but it is going at a steady speed. We can see that when they are increasing, they are accelerating. So we now know that acceleration is equal to the gradient. That's up over across or velocity over time. If we want to work out the distance traveled, that's the area under the graph. For this section here, it is a triangle. So to work that out, it is going to be half times base times height. For this section here, that is a rectangle. So that is going to be base times height. This section in the middle here is a bit more complicated because we have a triangle, a rectangle, and a triangle. So that is base times height plus half times base times height. And the height is the height of the triangle there. Acceleration is equal to the change in velocity over time. 
We can work out the change in velocity by taking the final velocity and minusing the initial velocity, and the time taken by taking the final time and minusing the initial time. Acceleration is in metres per second squared, velocity is in metres per second, and time is in seconds. Final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared is equal to 2 times acceleration times distance. Velocity, final and initial, is measured in metres per second. Acceleration is in metres per second squared. And distance is in metres. When you are falling, when something is falling, terminal velocity is going to be reached when all forces are balanced. A velocity time graph for this would be very fast acceleration as the object initially started to fall. As the object started to balance out, that would slow. And when they reach terminal velocity, there would be no further increase in speed. When you're free falling under gravity, your speed is going to be 9.8 meters per second, which is the same as the value of gravity, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Here we have a Newton's cradle, which really elegantly demonstrates a number of physics principles. First of all, inertia. An object that is in motion will remain in motion unless acted on by an outside force. An object at rest will remain in rest unless acted on by an outside force. So those balls in the middle are only going to move if something hits them. Those balls on the outside are only going to stop if something stops them. It demonstrates the conservation of energy, where the balls only slow down as they lose energy to other things. In this case, you can't hear it, but it's losing energy to sound, and it's losing energy to a bit of friction within the air. This will keep going for as long as there is energy within the system. And it also demonstrates Newton's third law, where for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. And we can see this as the balls keep hitting each other. Inertia is where an object at rest will remain at rest unless acted upon by a force and an object in motion will remain in motion unless acted on by an outside force. You can put this into action if you are driving along and you have your seatbelt on, the car brakes. You would not brake as well unless you were acted on by a force, that force being your seatbelt. Conservation of energy. An energy is never created or destroyed, it is only turned into something else. Here it is being turned into sound and a little bit of heat. And for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Force equals mass times acceleration. Force is measured in newtons. Mass is measured in kilograms. And acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. Momentum is mass times velocity. Mass is measured in kilograms. Velocity is measured in meters per second. And the momentum is measured in kilogram with a space meters per second. I know there's a temptation to put another line in there, but that would be wrong. The law of conservation of momentum says that momentum is always conserved, which in calculations means your momentum before is going to equal your momentum afterwards. So if you have two objects colliding, their momentum together before is equal to the colliding mind object afterwards. Here we have the electromagnetic spectrum uh, from radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-ray and gamma rays. Um, over here these ones are high energy and these are low energy. These are going to have a high frequency and these ones a low frequency. These are going to have a short wavelength and these are long wavelength. Wavelength for radio waves can stretch into the meters, the kilometers, very, very long wavelengths. Our radio waves can be used for radio communications, Microwaves can be used for mobile phones and for heating food. Infrared are used for things like button, the, the light on your remote control. You can also use it for heat sensing. Visible light is used for cameras in your eye. Ultraviolet can be used for detecting things like fake money. X-rays are used for breaking bones. And gamma rays can be used for treating cancers or sterilizing things like killing bacteria. Diffraction happens when a wave passes through a gap. Here we have a small gap and here we have a large gap. And the wave will curve around as it comes out of that gap. The amount of curvature, the amount of diffraction will depend on the size of the gap. Refraction happens when a wave passes from one medium into another medium, say from air into glass or air into water, and it will change direction. So here is our normal here, move it down to here. It will change direction as it goes through there. And the reason it changes direction is because the wave changes speed, but different parts of the wave change speed at different points. So this part down here that hits first is going to change speed, either getting 
anything faster or slower before this part of the wave up here which hasn't changed uh, medium or speed yet. You can easily make an electromagnet at home. All you need is a battery, some wire and an iron nail. Because all an electromagnet is, is an iron core with a wire around it connected up to a current. You can use this to pick up things like um, paper clips or iron filings. When a current is passed through the wire, it creates a magnetic field around the wire. And this in turn strongly magnetises the iron bar, thus creating our electromagnet. If you want to change the strength of an electromagnet, you can do two things. You can change the current, or you can change the number of turns or the number of coils that, that the wire times the wire is wrapped around the iron core. For Fleming's left hand rule, we need to make our left hand in this shape here. So finger pointing out, thumb up, finger out. And your first finger is your magnetic field. This thing here is the current and then your thumb is the movement of the force. And what you need to do when you have an exam question is literally contort your hand until it fits in the right direction. So first was nice and easy. My field is going in that direction. My current is going in that direction. So the movement of the force um, is going upwards. This one here is a bit more complicated because this finger needs to be pointing in that direction. My current needs to be going down and then my thumb is going into the page. We can change the size of the force by changing the current, by changing the strength of the magnet, or by changing the angle between the wire and the magnetic field lines. The greatest force is when the wire is perpendicular with magnetic field lines, and the force is going to be zero if the wire and the field lines are parallel. Magnetic flux density is the amount of magnetic flux in a certain area. And the equation that we use for this is force equals magnetic flux density times current times length. You'll notice really annoyingly that this is an uppercase I and a lowercase L. Our units for this for force are newtons. For magnetic flux density they are tesla. For current it is amps and for length that is meters. While this is called a simple electric motor, there's actually quite a lot of physics going on here. And for this, we really need to use our Fleming's left hand rule. So our magnetic field is going from north to south like this. Our current is moving actually in two different directions. On this side, it's moving in this direction. And on the other side, it's moving in this direction. So what we are going to have is that when the wire is moving past the south bit of the magnet, the force is going to be going down. And when it's moving past the north face of the magnet, the force is going to be going up. And because one side is being pushed down, the other side is being pushed up, it is going to turn around. Lots of different surfaces would emit and absorb radiation. Some will do it better than others. Over on the right hand side, you can see the practical, one of the required practicals that I've done for you. Good absorbers are going to be dark surfaces and matte surfaces. Good emitters are going to be dark matte surfaces. Good reflectors are going to be shiny surfaces. Work equals force times distance. Work is measured in joules, force is measured in newtons, and distance is measured in meters. So that one joule is equal to one newton meter. Kinetic energy is equal to half times mass times velocity squared. Kinetic energy is measured in joules, mass is measured in kilograms, velocity is measured in meters per second and with this the squared is just around the meters per second so you have to do that bit first. A fluid can either be a liquid or a gas. Liquids are incompressible, in examples like that word, or as gases are compressible. A transverse wave goes up and down. From one point 
to another point, and this doesn't matter whether it's from the top to the bottom, from the middle to the middle, we have the wavelength. The amplitude is measured from the middle to the top or from the middle to the bottom. The direction of movement for this is up and down. This could also be the direction of oscillation. And the direction of energy transfer is sideways. Here we have our longitudinal wave where we have areas of compression and areas of refraction. We can measure the wavelength in this from one point to another point. The direction of movement is side to side and so is the direction of energy. Frequency is the number of waves per second. So if we look at this block here as a second in time, something that would have a low frequency, we are not gonna see many peaks in one second. But something that had a high frequency, we would see lots of peaks or lots of waves within one second. You'll notice that for the high frequency one, it has a low wavelength, whereas for the low frequency one, it has a high or a long wavelength. If we want to measure the time period for something, that is one over the frequency. Time is measured in seconds and frequency is measured in hertz. There is a capital H and a lowercase z. Do not write lowercase both letters or uppercase both letters because they are wrong. If we want to measure the speed of a wave, we can use a ripple tank. This here will go in and out of the water, creating waves. From this, we can measure wavelength and also looking at how many waves pass a certain point in a second frequency. Then we can use our equation um, to work out the speed of the wave. V equals F times lambda. To work out the speed of a wave, wave speed, we can take the frequency and times it by the wavelength. Our units for speed are in meters per second. Frequency is in hertz, capital H, lowercase z, and wavelength is in meters.